Terminator Dark Fate was released in 2019 with the expectation that we were getting a proper Terminator treatment and the true sequel to T2. James Cameron's involvement, big names like Linda Hamilton and Edward Furlong be attached to the film, and good old Arnold once again reprising his role as a T-800. This looked to be a big blockbuster success. Unfortunately, it wasn't. While there are fans who still like the movie and critics who have praised it, the movie was a box office bomb. Domestically, it grossed less than 34% of the film's budget. Although it did better in international markets, Terminator Genesis back in 2015 did a lot better. And most fans considered it the weakest installment of the franchise. So what happened? There were many factors at play, and without getting into too many details, one of the biggest issues was that this felt like the same old Terminator chase. An evil Terminator and a protector sent back in time to save our heroes. We've seen it in T1, T2, T3, Genesis, and although Salvation was one of those films that tried to take a franchise in a different direction, Dark Fate repeated more of the same. The masses just weren't interested anymore. Then, of course, there was the big twist at the beginning of Dark Fate. Warning, spoiler alert, a T-800 is sent back in time and kills a teenage John Connor. The same John Connor that was part of the Terminator mythos we grew up on and loved. I've always believed that if you screw with the source material, you screw a part of your fan base, and especially those who are lapsed viewers of your product. The news about Edward Furlong's return was for CGI and nothing more. A major reason for John's death was to replace John with Danny Ramos, a women sort of savior of the future fighting the evil Legion, basically a replacement of Skynet. Some fans blamed Hollywood's obsession of being woke as a problem that hurt the film. Without going all political, what should be noted is most Terminator fans aren't really the misogynists the studios today picture them as. After all, fans would agree Sarah Connor was already badass in both Terminator 1 and 2 as a lead character. She was also central to the Sarah Connor Chronicles TV series. After all, it's named after her. So to think having women as leads was somehow a problem for Terminator fans isn't really true. The creators of Dark Fate decided to be as woke as possible throughout this film, whether it was Carl the Terminator being the ideal husband or by having a person of color and a woman replace John Connor as the savior. The real problem was that Danny Ramos as a character was just not interesting in the least. All in all, it had nothing to do with her gender or ethnicity, but how she was written in. And worst of all, the film actually failed at being woke when it insinuated now listen to this it insinuated that women were just for wombs like what what is this movie trying to be ironically the screenplay was written all by men maybe it wasn't woke after all so an alternate universe dark fate is actually a better film but can it really be fixed let's take a look at how we can make this film better without making too many changes Warning, though, the twist here is John Connor actually still dies, but just not the way it originally happened. It's 1998, three years after the destruction of Cyberdyne. Sarah and John Connor are living out of the country as fugitives. Although Judgment Day in 1997 never happened because they've changed the future in T2, Sarah comes home one day to find John Connor laying dead on the floor. Sarah learns that John died of a drug overdose. Sarah now has to live with the idea that she could save her son from Terminators, save the world from a nuclear apocalypse, but couldn't save her son from himself. Sarah has to move on with her life. It's 2002. Sarah returns to the U.S. till a Terminator appears and goes after her. Sarah manages to take down the Terminator at ease. She's in shock. She has no idea why Terminators are still around, but they look different. They were actually initially weaker than the ones she faced before. And as the years go by and stronger Terminators appear, she starts to receive text messages from someone known as Carl, letting her know the whereabouts of these Terminators. Fast forward to 2019. Two Terminators appear from the future. One liquid metal, the Rev-9, and one metal, the Rev-8, are sent to two different locations. So instead of it being one Terminator that splits into two as we got in the film, we have two distinct Terminators. The Rev-9 is vicious and hunts down and terminates its, its target, an unknown teenager. It now has a secondary mission that gets activated, but we just don't know what that is yet. The Rev-8, on the other hand, is looking for Danny Ramos and her family. Grace, an augmented human, also appears from the future. The Rev-8 kills Ramos' whole family. Grace attempts to save Danny, who is on her way home from work. Danny believes she's being kidnapped, similar to how Sarah Connor felt in T1. 
The Rev 8 chases after Danny and Grace. Grace fights back till out of nowhere an older Sarah Connor appears and blasts away at the Rev 8. She takes out the chip from its head and smashes it on the ground. Our heroes now meet up at a hotel. Grace knows who Sarah is. Sarah learns that she is the mother of the resistance in the future, the very symbol of hope, their leader. Danny Ramos, however, is one of the leaders of the resistance who is trained by Sarah. Sarah wondered why Terminators were going after different targets instead of her, and learned that future leaders are targeted for termination, leaders she helped save in the near future before she dies of old age in 2044 at the tender age of 80. Sarah chuckles that it's nice to know when she'll be dead. Grace says she was sent to protect Danny by the Resistance, but now has to protect Sarah too. Grace says that two Terminators were sent back and they only stopped one. We now learn about the Legion. Instead of being a complete replacement of Skynet, the Legion is actually an alliance of different AI cores from different parts of the world. In 2021, a global war erupted and AI was used as a primary source for war by different nations, till AI in a split second decided that instead of fighting each other, it was better to fight the humans instead. Grace was born after the war, but heard all about the legendary Sarah Connor, who saved many humans. The difference here is instead of a nuclear apocalypse, certain biological weapons were used to kill off most of the human race. Those who managed to survive, including Sarah, formed a resistance and fought back. Sarah wants to find this other Terminator. Grace tells her it's a new prototype, the Rev-9, a liquid metal machine. Sarah says she's faced one before, when Skynet existed. Grace, however, knows nothing about Skynet. Sarah wants to hunt down this Terminator and texts Carl if, she, if he knows anything about its whereabouts. Sarah asks if they can stop Legion from forming. Grace says she doesn't know too much about how to stop it, but that AI at this time had already expanded so far and learned too fast all around the world that she isn't really sure if there's a way to stop it. Sarah starts to wonder if destroying Cyberdyne was the right thing to do, that perhaps her son would have been alive and living in the future if she didn't stop Cyberdyne. Carl texts Sarah back to meet face to face. Sarah, Grace, and Danny head towards an abandoned factory to meet with Carl. Instead, they see a shadowy hooded figure. Carl says... Welcome, Sarah Connor, and reveals himself as the T-800 we all know and love. Sarah is in shock. She grabs her shotgun and is about to blast the T-800 till Grace stops her and gets in front of Carl. Sarah says it's a Skynet Terminator. Grace gets in Carl's face. Carl says he has no intention to harm anyone. So we start to learn a little bit more about Carl. Carl was sent to the year 1988 to South America. So this would be sometime between Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 in the timeline, to find and protect John Connor, but a time displacement error caused damage to his neural net. Carl did not know who or what he was, and when he understood what he was, that he was a Terminator, he blended in with humans as much as he could. Years later, his neural net was partially self-repaired and learned of his mission to protect John, but his mission parameters were disabled. He believes that John Connor may have died based on what he was able to deduct on Sarah's behaviors, actions, and on Terminators hunting her down. Carl decided to help Sarah to honor John, but was unaware of why different Terminators were sent back, and now an augmented human was also sent. Sarah tells Carl he failed in his mission because John does die in 1998. She doesn't know what to think about Carl and mistrusts him. Carl says he wants to help to take down the Rev-9 and is able to track where its whereabouts. It had arrived in the U.S., but it's no longer there. It's now in Mexico. Carl theorizes that the Rev-9 could be enhancing military and AI in different parts of the world based on the location of where it started. Grace accepts Carl's help. Sarah wants to keep a close eye on Carl. Grace wants to learn more about Skynet, and he tells her everything. She's also curious about his CPU, being that it's different from Legion technology. Grace learns how to track Terminators from Carl using a special device he built. So our heroes hunt down the Rev-9 to a location in Mexico across the border. Sarah believes that the Rev-9 is the one responsible for this new future. The Rev-9 is being hunted, but it's tougher than the T-1000 was. Even though it knows about Sarah and Danny, they're not his mission priority. Rev-9 makes a connection with Carl during a fight. He downloads information from its processor and is fascinated with where it came from. Near the end of the film, Danny manages to fight the Rev-9 all on her own but dies trying. Grace fails in her mission to save her, despite setting up a trap of using deadly corrosives with the help of Carl. Rev-9 is finally destroyed when Carl pushes the Rev-9 into the trap and they are both terminated. At the end of the movie, Grace and Sarah Connor are, at, are the last two survivors. 
Sarah and Grace decide to find a way to stop Legion from forming, perhaps target communications technologies, and protect any future leaders from harm. Leaders Grace actually still knows about. They head back to the States and find an African-American child in a playground who Grace talks about becoming the leader of the Pacific Resistance in the 2030s. Sarah wants to stick around a bit to make sure she's okay, and Grace activates Carl's device to track Terminators and actually finds one elsewhere. Now there's a twist in the epilogue. A computer screen from where the Rev-9 uploaded data back in Mexico turns on, and the audience notices a Legion symbol being glitched with images of Skynet. We learn that the Rev-9 was unaware when he was downloading information from Carl's chip, that Skynet was actually a virus that infects AI, unlike the Legion, which are made up of an alliance of AI cores. Skynet is slowly infecting Legion programming. So what did you all think of this alternative universe version of Dark Fate? What did you think of the idea that Sarah Connor is actually the savior of the future, and in a sense was always the central character of the Terminator franchise? Post in the comment below, and thank you for watching In The Plot. We'll be continuing to post, and be sure to like this video and subscribe for new content. Thanks again.